Hey guys, welcome back to another installment on the channel. I thought we'd revisit a topic that's been quite popular in recent history, and that's foliar feeding. Now, foliar feeding is a little different than traditional fertilizing. Um, the foliar feeding involves taking a liquid fertilizer uh, that's quite dilute um, and spraying it on your leaves and under your leaves uh, for a quick uptake of nutrients. Now, I'm a huge proponent of feeding your soil to feed your plants, but there are instances where foliar feeding uh, is very useful. So studies have shown that when you fertilize through the roots, it can often take up to two weeks for those nutrients to make it from the roots to the apical mary stem of the plant. Now that's a long time if you have a plant that's in distress uh, or is deficient in a certain nutrient profile. Now a foliar feeding, they've actually found out that you can feed the leaves and it will go through the entire plant often within 20 minutes. Now that's a huge advantage to traditional fertilizing through the soil. It's also a huge advantage for gardeners like me who love to supercharge their fruits and vegetables with as much nutrition as possible. You know, all my beds are filled with organic compost. I amend with numerous uh, soil supplements throughout the year, both into the mulch and into the soil directly. Uh, I also am in the soil with rock dust for remineralization. But one thing that I like to do that goes above and beyond all that is to make a foliar fertilizer from seaweed. So there's many commercial uh, foliar fertilizers on the market now, as well for years. People have been taking common liquid fertilizers uh, and diluting them to certain levels and then foliar feeding with that, um, all of which uh, have produced fantastic results. Now for me, when I foliar fertilize, it's always with a fertilizer that I've made myself simply because I grow too many fruits and vegetables that can be exposed to this kind of fertilizing and I don't want to worry about what's on the leaves, what's on my fruit, and what's on my vegetables uh, when I go to eat it. Because often when I grab stuff from the garden, uh, I don't have to wash it before I eat it because I'm growing it myself. And so I strongly suggest that if you are going to folio fertilize, you know, make your own mixture. Make an organic mixture you know, that's safe to ingest so that you don't have to worry about what's on your food. In my previous video with folio fertilizing, I showed you how to make your own mixture from the weeds in your garden. It's a fantastic way to folio feed. I stand behind the theory that when you pull weeds out of your gardens, those very weeds have taken out a certain profile of nutrients. And to get those nutrients back, those weeds have to go back into your garden in some form. So you can mulch them, you can compost it and add it later. But I found making a liquid extract by fermenting those weeds got those nutrients back in faster, more effectively, and the plants just boomed ahead. They were more disease resistant and it's anecdotal, you know, but the veggies and the fruit just tasted better. So for those of you that live in coastal regions, and have access to beaches, I'm going to show you how to make the best liquid folio feed fertilizer you can possibly make and you most certainly can't buy. Check out this red Russian kale. I'm definitely going to harvest some of this guy tonight. Okay, so me and the pup are going to head off to the beach right now and collect some seaweed. Hey, want to go for a walk? <laughs> Do you want to go for a walk? <laughs> So Poppy senses that the beach is near, so she's starting to get antsy. She'll yawn a lot and whine. Just lets us know that the beach is close. Hey, Pup. Oh, yeah. All right, so it's a bit of a walk to get down to the beach, but the puppy likes it. Hmm? I know what you want, puppy. You want this. Okay. 
Okay, so Papa and I are here at the beach. Um, now this may be different depending on where you live in the world uh, and what beaches you have access to, but I always try to come at low tide because that gives me the best access uh, to the most varieties of seaweed. Now when I'm collecting, um, I try not to collect too much at once, you know, depending on your municipal bylaws or your city bylaws, um, you might not even be allowed to collect seaweed on your beach. So always check and make sure that you're even allowed um, to be taking the seaweed from your local beaches. So in the world of seaweed, there are three main groups. Now your first group is the one that everybody knows, and that's typical green seaweed like this. So this is in the group called chlorophyta. This stuff is great, and this is the stuff that people typically collect. Now your second group would be the brown algae. Now this guy here is in the group Phaophyta. These guys are also great. Now the third group is always trickier to find. And some beaches don't have it at all, and I might not even get any today. And that's the red algae. And that's in the group called Rhodophyta. Doesn't really look like there's going to be any here today. Ah, I mean, if I had my water shoes, I could probably go diving for some. But I usually try and just take the stuff that's washed up on the beach, uh, rather than going into the ocean and collecting it. Here's another big guy, bull kelp. So he's in the Phaophyta. See these guys, they're shaped like a big bull whip. They're actually quite big. <laughs> Let's see if I can dislodge the whip part from it. There we go. There we go. And now I can just grab. The leafy part that's what I want okay oh there's a big rock crab that didn't make it now it's pretty disturbing actually because I'm seeing more and more adult crabs um, lying dead on the beach in the last couple of years, there's been a lot, a lot of these red rock crabs and a lot of uh, dungeon S crabs. So I haven't read anything specifically on, on why this is happening, but if anybody knows, um, yeah, leave a comment down below because it's, uh, yeah, it's really sad to see. Okay, so Puppy and I have scoured about a kilometer of this beach and we haven't been able to find any red um, we haven't been able to find any red seaweed today which is too bad so what is the importance of these different groups of seaweed well every group of seaweed and probably every species of seaweed within those groups has a different nutrient profile in their leaves just like a weed does, just like the vegetables in your garden. And so the more different varieties of seaweed we can collect, we will get a larger range uh, of nutrients, micronutrients, and trace elements um, than we would if we just simply collected, you know, a huge bucket of just green seaweed. 
And so the theory is, you know, grab as many different types uh, of seaweed as you can to make this mixture. Okay, so we've collected all the seaweed that we need. We're gonna head home now so we can start the fermentation process of this seaweed. Okay, so there's much debate about this next step. A lot of people suggest that you have to wash your seaweed, you know, because it is coming from salt water. And so the theory is, is that there's a lot of salts left on your seaweed. It's bad for your garden, so on and so on. I don't subscribe to that theory. You know, when I'm placing this um, on top of my garden as a mulch, I definitely won't wash it. Um, I've never had any bad results, um, you know, from excess salts. And you have to remember, you know, all the salts in the ocean, they're not all sodium chloride, right? It's not all NaCl. So a lot of the salts that are in the ocean um, contain a ton of trace elements um, and minerals. So not all salts are created equal. Now, having said that, for this procedure, you know, because it is a foliar fertilizer, I do rinse it. Because I'm going to be spraying this directly onto the leaves, I am a little more cautious, you know, about salt buildup. So I'll simply rinse it. You know, it won't affect the uh, the nutrient profile of the final mixture. I just feel better uh, uh, about soaking it. So to do that, I simply dump our seaweed, or try to, dump our seaweed into the strainer, okay, and then place it into the bucket. Give it a good rinse. Right. And then just let that sit and drain off all the excess salt water and then we can put it into the bucket for fermentation okay so now for the next step you're simply going to want to take you know your bunch of seaweed that you washed put it into your bucket now you need a bucket that has a lid oh, a little bit more you need a bucket that has a lid okay then we're going to want to add a little bit of water to this Okay, so when you're adding the water, I just want to add enough to submerge the seaweed. You want to keep this stuff as concentrated as possible. So, let's see what that looks like. Okay, maybe a tiny bit more. There we go. Okay, now... You put your lid on. And let's let that sit uh, for about two weeks. Okay guys, so our seaweed has been fermenting in our water for about three weeks. Let's look inside and see what's going on. Don't drop the camera in there. So let's give it one final stir and then we can strain this stuff. Yeah, you're going to want to plug your nose for this portion. No question. All right, so for the last step here, you're just gonna need a strainer and another clean bucket. We simply wanna strain out those particles of seaweed that haven't broken down so that it doesn't gum up our spray bottles. Now I just let that drain out of there for a few minutes. 
So don't throw away, you know, the mushy seaweed, the stuff that you strained out. It'll make a great mulch um, or add it to your compost. There's still a ton of nutrients uh, and micro elements in there. So definitely don't just toss it aside. That is beneficial for your garden as well. Um, I'm going to use it actually on my raspberry patch. So at this stage of the process, this liquid is perfectly safe to use in your garden in a full strength mixture. You don't need to dilute it with water. You can simply put it into a watering can, you know, and fertilize your garden like you normally would with any liquid fertilizer. Now, I generally don't use liquid fertilizers in my garden. Um, I tend to feed the soil through my compost rather than diluting chemical fertilizers and spreading them on the garden. So what I'll be using this for exclusively is for foliar feeding. So let me show you how I do that. Okay, so what we're here for is for foliar feeding. Now with this seaweed mixture, I use it at a half strength. So I'll take my spray bottle and I'll fill it. Half full of rainwater. And then I'll grab the seaweed extract mixture and fill the rest of the bottle up to the top. Now already with all that coarse material strained out of there, this mixture is starting to smell a lot less worse. Okay. Now our seaweed mixture is ready to spray on the leaves. So now we've created a foliar feeding solution from seaweed extract. It's ready to spray on the leaves. Now a couple tips when you're foliar feeding. You only want to do it at night. There's no point in doing it during the day. Now during the day, plant leaf stomata are actually closed. Now stomata are essentially the leaves pores. So if those pores are closed, the foliar feeding solution doesn't do anything it just sits there, then dries out. So if you're gonna foliar feed, you gotta do it at night. Now when I'm doing it, it's because I wanna get nutrients into a plant fast. And since the majority of stomata are actually on the underside of the leaf, I spray the plant all around. Now the great thing about this stuff, it doesn't matter if it gets on your tomatoes, doesn't matter if it hits a pepper or a cucumber, you know, it's completely safe. And you can't really say that about the chemical fertilizers you buy in the store. All right, let's do a quick recap in case you're joining us late. Now, what we were doing in this video was making a seaweed extract for the purpose of foliar feeding our vegetable plants. Now, we did this by collecting seaweed from our local beach, rinsing it, then placing it in a bucket with a little bit of rainwater, just enough to cover the seaweed, and fermenting it for about three weeks. After about three weeks, we strain that mixture of its coarse materials and then cut it in half with water and put it in our spray bottle. And as we just touched on, if you're going to foliar feed, foliar feed at a little bit of a diluted strength. You don't want to burn those leaves. You know, foliar feeding is fast acting. It gets to the plant right away. You don't need a strong solution. If you're going to foliar feed, you got to do it at night. The plant stomata, their pores are closed during the day. So just do it at night. Again, don't worry about getting this stuff on your veggies or your fruit. It can't hurt you. You know, it will leave a salt stain possibly. Just wash them off before you eat. As always, guys, leave any questions or comments down below. Do you guys foliar feed? Have you made your own? Do you buy a commercial one? What do you like to do? Let me know about it, and let's get this community talking about the benefits of foliar feeding. Click subscribe if you haven't already. For those of you that have, I really do appreciate the support, and I'll see you next time.